What's up guys, it's Michael here. In this video, we're gonna discuss how does public transportation can solve the problem with currently college tuition. So in this video, there are gonna be a bunch of topics that will all relate to each other. So it's a broad general topics. And also, I'm gonna use some examples that it's gonna wet a paper dragon. And when I do that, please click the like button down below and subscribe button. I'm going to mention this a lot because I'm going to offend a lot of bots that are probably going to come after me after the making of this video. But I have to mention it because it's a perfect example how if you think outside the box and decide not to look at every detail through a binocular, you can see that everything links and work together. So how does public transportation can help with college tuition. And you must be thinking, how is that even possible? So think about it. our society is very interconnected, meaning that to get from point A to point B and to whatever case, to point C, it's all about travel and efficiency. Meaning is, if you get a college degree, let's assume that you are a doctor, because like I mentioned, it's always about supply and demand. And another one has to be mentioned is efficiency is key. Then third is location. These are the limiting factors. How does people can get jobs from point A to point B? So back to what I was mentioning at hand, if you're a doctor, correct? If you're a doctor, you let's assume you have 36 seats and you have to pay over $200,000 after you graduate from physician and you can move up from there. Like you can go from physician to like neurology, anesthesiology and add more years in time and pay more into your debt. So how does this all relate to get with public transportation? So if you're in a, high, in a massive amount of debt and you need somewhere to live, you got multiple options. In this case, the more lucky people, number one, you can live with your parents, which is great. And based on your location, you can basically get a job from there and work from there. Number two, you can rent. Rent a different place that's a lot cheaper. But in now, in specifically this case, rent is getting way more expensive. And in general, we're going to target public transportation for major metro areas because public transportation only really works for places where the population is extremely huge, meaning that every people in per square mile has to be massive. Because a lot of things to view I'm also going to miss. Please click the like button down below and the subscribe button, especially the like button because here it goes. So if you look at cities such as Los Angeles, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, New York, those are major transportation hubs. So how do they all relate to get our public transportation? It's getting from people from point A to point B. So you mentioned how do doctors make their money? They gotta find a job in a hospital, especially like even open your own clinic. It's really difficult. So let's assume that you work at downtown LA and you live in Riverside or you live in San Bernardino area. You just graduated from a doctor, you have a lot of money in, in debt. So getting to, if you get in like invited to work at a hospital or get hired over there, transportation is the main key and factor. Like especially in 2020, 2021, explain how much difference does transportation and working at home can play a big difference. Because public transportation helps ease traffic, meaning it gets people off the road and gets them into trains by condensing more people into buses. Basically cars, you can take only about two, at most one to at most maybe five, seven people per in that little box. And if you look at trains, public transportation, you can fit a lot more people, move them in many more places. That's why it only really works in popular density areas. I'm not bashing on cars, I'm a car lover myself. But at the same time as traffic is not good for anyone but like, there's no benefit besides sitting there and wasting half your life in there but like efficiency is key getting people from point a to point b so if you have more options let's say you're a service worker or you maybe art degree you have to attend art centers constantly or maybe attend programs so you have the option to drive as one of them and public transportation will help reduce traffic and also public transportation sometimes the location of your workplace will be right in line with trains, subways, maybe the bus route. Those all help a lot. If they're on the way and they're on the line and they're faster than taking a car, then most likely you will take that. That's how you offset the balance because efficiency is key. So if you take a train from take you from point A to point B, especially if that distance is really massive and you know like Houston, Texas or Austin, Texas, it's really crowded. And same with downtown LA and LA in general is very crowded. If you find out that public transportation can get you from your place cheaper, 
faster. You're looking about like 10 to 30 minutes faster. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you take it? And of course, safety is a concern. Safety has to be managed by better policing, better rules and regulations that allows policing to have more power at hand to stop certain crimes. And also, they have to be regulated too. So that is what their job is. But how does it all tie together? So when you have jobs like engineering degree, let's put it this way, engineering firms are everywhere. They're not just in like one specific location. They're not like all in this one area. No, you have like engineering firms that can like make medical devices, cars, they can look at chemicals, you can look at different types of engineering. For example, whoever designed this camera and microphone, they have manufacturing everywhere, engineers and designers everywhere. They're not just all located in one area. So since they're located in different areas, what's the best way to get that person, your employer, to get, have them and hire employee from further distances? How to get them from point A to point B? fast as possible and most efficient as possible and safe as possible. Those are like the three main factors. Cost is one of them. So if you can make cost outvalue the time also, then after that cost will be a main factor. Most a lot of people look for time is to get from point A and point B. If like, for example, you take a car, it takes 30 minutes to get from, let's say, uh, Pasadena all the way down to, let's say Orange County, beginning of Orange County, because you have a job there then over that, if it takes 30 minutes, that's great because it's faster than a car. And public transportation takes, let's say, 40 minutes to get there. And that's, that's another option. But you got to think about what happens if you crash in traffic. If you crash in traffic, you add another 20, 30 minutes in your drive. Then public transportation will be the better option. It gives people the opportunity. And the person doing that job for engineering, whatever degree they have, they, or a service job, they must be thinking, hey, stop driving. I can take public transportation and go to point A to point B public transportation besides you know lowering the costs lowering the time and moving more people it helps out everything out of beneficiary factors but the reason why there's also downsides to it too like as i mentioned in my previous videos public transportation helps a lot and how this specific helpful colleges public transportation can have its downsides too meaning if you build too many of them or you build it too fast and now it's time for you to hit that like button down below and subscribe button because i'm about to wet a paper dragon so if you look at public transportation, it's very, very good. It moves point A to point B, very fast, very efficient. But here's a downside. You need to have enough people who are willing to take it. Number two, the train has to meet efficiency. For example, cars, I believe the most best mileage, should we say, let's say miles per gallon, the best way to measure like a car's mile per gallon is to drive at a certain speed limit. You cannot be too fast, you cannot be too slow. Meaning if you're driving at like 100 miles per hour, you have all that drag coming in. That makes the car less efficient. You drive too slow, you're blocking everyone else who wants to go faster. Then that's not efficient either. So there's like a set speed limit that's the most efficient for the car to meet both criteria. Time is one of them and a cost to operate. For example, Japan's high speed bullet train, they only have like, believe, one one super high speed bullet train and believe the other ones are not as fast as that whatever current one but they can justify it from point a to point b for that specific bullet train moves a lot of people they're always trying to get it filled that's how they make money meaning is to operate these public transportation services you need a high enough population number two you got to get people willing to take it number three you have to be safe enough and number four trust is so important the reason why trust is so important is if you blow a trust on public transportation a lot of people will find other sources and this is the time for you to hit the like button down below and the subscribe button please because i'm about to wet a paper dragon and a best example of bad public transportation is china and why did i mention china because there's a couple other financial youtubers have mentioned the same thing too the reason why is look at China's public transportation. It's one of the best in the world. It's one of the fastest in the world. It has the most in the world. But what they didn't tell you, how much it costs to operate trains. And it's not you know, your average train either. If it's your average train, you can justify it with lower costs, meaning they require you don't have as, there is like a basic requirement, amount of people you need to be in the train, take the train every day to meet efficient capacity, meaning you meet your expenses versus your costs. But the problem is they built it onto basically Japan's bullet trains, every single one of them. And it built it, and what makes it even worse, they built it to places 
that don't have a heavy enough population or justify getting a job from whatever specific place in China to the other specific place. And that bullet train will kill you in cost. That is literally a definition of not to reason why not to build high speed public transportation in certain places. Your goal should be more efficient transportation. And the only time you really use high speed transportation, like it's only for major cities to another major city. For example, oh, please click the like button down below and the subscribe button because bots are going to hate me after what I just said. For example, let's look at Los Angeles. A lot of people like to go to Nevada, Las Vegas. So the best place to build a bullet train, you can find a more open area. For example, maybe around Bakersfield because that community is not that many people. If you want that community to grow, you can have a high-speed bullet train built there because one, the city needs money. Number two, you don't have to deal with a lot of people buying up their land and also maybe doing some evictions and try to buy up their land, try to build a train there. And number three, instead of, since going to Las Vegas, a lot of people go to Las Vegas from LA to down to Nevada and around Las Vegas area, the freeway goes down to two lanes only. So you're basically limited on speed. But right there would be a perfect time for a bullet train because a lot of people from California, especially LA and driving from Northern California would like to go to Las Vegas. So if they build a bullet train there, they can justify the cost because so many people go, why like, you know, get stuck in a two lane freeway with 18 wheelers right next to you that have a chance to flip over on top of you because of sandstorms and you cost a lot for gas and you have a risk of driving or, or when you can just park your car, pay for a parking permit over there, take a train that's like 10 bucks and it takes you from that specific point in like Victorville or Barstow or Bakersfield, or not Bakersfield, Barstow and transfer you all the way to Las Vegas in like an hour, or hour and a half because getting to Vegas by car is on average four hours. It can go up to like seven to eight if there's an accident. If you have a bullet train that can justify the time and even destroy airplanes on the process, meaning not destroy them physically, but financially, meaning instead of like, you know, pay them hundreds of dollars to take a plane to like all the way to Las Vegas airstrip, you can just take a train that costs like 10, 30, $50 and take you all the way there and take you all the way back. That literally cuts the traffic right there a lot. And it'll be really good for 18 wheelers or moving cargo also. And that's why public transportation is literally the best for heavily densely populated areas. If you look at Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, Texas itself, they have four major cities. And I actually don't remember all their names. I think I believe it was Dallas, Houston, Austin, and I forgot the last one. Sorry about that. People who live in Texas, please forgive me. But public transportation, a lot of people in Texas work in different sectors, like how a lot of companies right now, major companies are moving out to Texas to look for better jobs, you know, cheaper homes, but eventually it's going to happen. Like how Texas built that, whatever, 26 lane highway is going to include the, improve the flow of traffic. But oh my God, those people never thought, you know, you, you build a bigger highway, more cars going to be in there. But have you ever thought People on the highway, they still need to exit the highway. And when you exit a highway, it's still like literally one to two lanes. And most of the time, one lane, you're still going to be stuck from literally the same thing what you started with. Oh, public transportation there was the key. Not extending your highways. My guy, please. Public transportation includes biking, roller skating, skateboarding, you name it. And even foot transportation. Because right now, foot transportation is actually becoming really, really, really fast. Meaning that you used to bike on, let's say you go on a bike, you can, most you probably go like what, 10 miles an hour on a flat road because lots of people don't have speed bikes. Like it's like 10 miles an hour at max on average the same speeds. But now with electric bikes, you can actually hit top speeds at like 40 miles an hour or faster, which, you know, it's pretty dangerous. But you think about it, if you have roads or lanes specifically built for these type of transportation that requires you to use like a bike, skateboards instead of walking, and you have a specific dedicated two lanes for them, you can move a lot of people out from their cars. Let's say they need to go to school. Instead of taking a car to go to school, why didn't you just bike to school? You're going just as fast as car driving on a public street. And then second of all, you're probably going even faster because you're not locked in like a 25 mile per hour speed limit. If you go that fast, then you're gonna be faster than a car. You just need dedicated lanes to keep them safe. Dedicated lanes with actual barriers. Then a lot of people, there'd be a lot less traffic and you save money on fuel and gas. And also, Bikes, electric bikes themselves, or electric skateboards are still cheaper than a car, no matter what you say. Still cheaper. And your average one is still doing really well. So how does all relate to college? 
simple. When people get a degree, they have to find a job. And the number one thing about the dictates of a person get a job besides, you know, the availability, it's also, even to have the availability for that specific job is location. Meaning that if you want to work at a specific job, you have to be living around here because transportation anywhere further than like a couple miles, it's very difficult. Driving itself is becoming more difficult because there's so much traffic. So one, like, let's say you don't get to your job to Long Beach and you live in like Pasadena. You got to dedicate at least, an, like that drive itself with no traffic, you're probably looking at like 40 minutes, at most an hour. But if you add traffic, you're literally looking close to two hours of driving just to get to work. And when you get off of work, you're going to have to suffer through traffic again because a lot of people set their work hours to be leaving around traffic time. So a bunch of people leave at the same time, got traffic. So if, you had, if they have public transportation in case, then public transportation will negate most of the traffic. A lot of people will, don't want to go through traffic, will take public transportation. They don't have to buy a car. They don't have to pay for gas or electricity. They can just take, you know, get on a train and go from point A to point B. And in most extreme cases, some people can even, you know, electric bike if they have lanes or they go all the way down. But that literally the key in how fixed college tuition, because if you think about it, a lot of people who get a college degree, when they come out, they need to look for a job. And most of the time there is jobs for that degree. The problem is, where do you live after you find that job? Like you found a job in Long Beach, as I mentioned earlier, but you cannot afford the housing there because the housing is too expensive. Like even change the zoning regulation for housing over there. Let's say you do it like how Asian countries do it. Like for example, Japan, they have a lot of earthquakes. California has a lot of earthquakes. They even have tsunamis, which most of Southern California, besides you know the tippy part of Northern California will mostly have a tsunami. Don't have to worry about that. And we don't have a lot of rain either. So why can't we have buildings like similar to Japan? We have shops in the bottom and living space on top. It, it's, that's a zoning issue. And how does that go with public transportation? If you start packing a lot of people in a small, densely populated area, like New York, for example, like New York has a lot of people in a really small square mile compared to California. California has a lot of people too, but they're not so condensed. But if you condense a lot of people, then cars is not the answer. Cars is, should be like an option, not the main source of transportation. Public transportation, trains will be one of them, such as subways. And the main one will be biking, roller skating, and walking. If those can be viable sources of transportation, a lot of people can move from point A to point B. And if you improve public transportation, like building more lanes to other cities, people don't have to forcefully live in that specific perimeter in the area to get to their job. They can say, hey, I can spend like 10 minutes more, like three to four cities away, and just bike down here on my electric bike because I don't have to suffer through traffic. And also rent and buying a house could be way cheaper and buying a super densely populated area. So if that's the case, then public transportation will make it really viable for A, for people to look for a job. I mean, if that job requires you to work in a specific sector, but you cannot afford a housing there, you cannot afford to rent there, allows it gives them more options. What you are looking for are options. Options to live further and further away and get to your destination just as fast as you're living next door to whatever job or whatever plant you're working at. If you can make it more efficient and more justifiable, it's perfect. And public transportation, as I mentioned, there is a good part and a bad part. That is where people do measurements of the population, where if the population is dense enough and you have enough trust, like for example, a banking system in America, a lot of people have a lot of trust in it. If they can build railroad lines, subways, and basically roads for you know electrical bikes, electrical skateboards, electrical roller skates, if they have enough trust or electrical scooters, they build enough trust in that system, people will take that instead of taking cars because cars can only pack a large amount of people. It allows people who get college degrees, and in, in, in their case, like I mentioned, in college degrees, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. But public transportation is one way to help it fix people from getting jobs. When they get, a, get that specific job, if they have to live in that location, they don't have to live there. They can live even further away because they know to get to their job, it's still really efficient to get there. You don't have to be stuck to your traffic. You don't spend less time in traffic. It gives them incentive to live further away, which most of the time it's going to be cheaper and to work at their job and work at a more efficient pace to pay off the loans. You think about it. College itself, it's a money maker for the government. If the government just decides to make it more efficient for people to work, make it more efficient people to travel, 
then they will solve most of their student loan problem debt. Because like even they pay a lot of debt, like even they change it where you list the amount of money it costs to get a degree. And the person still wants to, you know, still wants to get the degree because you can't stop those people. They have the right to pick. Then you have to give them the option and give them the availability for them to basically live further away and to arrive at their job in you know, a timely manner and line them to you know, move their public transportation, move them from point A to point B instead of always taking cars. You know, it'll be perfect. The government will make money. It's a double win-win situation. That was the whole point of public transportation. And also keep in mind, as I mentioned, wedding the paper dragon, please click the like button down below and subscribe button. And when you build transportation, remember, there is efficient transportation, very efficient, meaning not super slow, not super fast, but the perfect speed to save the most amount of money, including electricity costs, operating costs, bear, you know, the track costs or maintenance, the bearing costs, when each time the tracks roll over a certain amount of speed, and also bullet trains, you know, certain amount of speeds. And it's justifiable to build a bullet train for really long distances, especially to two major cities connect. Maybe that's a time to build a super fast high speed train. Maybe from other cities, from small city to small city, more sufficient train as possible. That is up to the government to take care of. So I've been going on long enough and I attacked some places where a lot of bots really don't like. Please click the like button down below and subscribe button. And if, if I get enough likes on this video and subscribes, then I'll start covering topics that will start poking a lot of places that a lot of people don't want to mention, but I think I should mention it. And I just haven't yet because I haven't found the audience are willing to support me. Because if they do, I'll give you reasons why you should like A, look into, B, invest, which you should always speak with a financial advisor. I'm just a guy on YouTube giving you ideas, but you got to look into yourself. And number three, it allows you to think outside the box. If you're going to college, it's fine. If you don't go on college, it's also fine. These are all options. And I'm giving you ideas what you can do to improve your lifestyle. That's the whole point of this channel, personal finance. Please click the like button down below and subscribe button because those bots are really not happy after this posting of this video and this editing. See you guys next time. Peace.